So we do not have a curative treatment for Sjogren's syndrome. We have medications that can help improve symptoms, but really do not alter the course of the disease. We rely on the patients to do a lot of the work in terms of managing their Sjogren's syndrome. And what I mean by this is that they have to, on a daily basis, attend to their dryness of the eyes, dryness of the mouth, and provide proper care so that complications do not arise. So for instance, for the eyes, it requires that they administer artificial tears and medicated drops on a regular basis throughout the day, that they perform proper eyelid hygiene, um, and that they see their eye doctor on a regular basis to get proper care. And for their mouth, we really want them to do very meticulous dental care to prevent the development of cavities. They may need to sip water frequently throughout the day. They may use the lozenges or other dry mouth products to stimulate saliva flow. And we want them to see their dentist on a regular basis, often four times a year, to get proper uh, treatment. They also should use fluoride on, uh, to prevent the development of cavities. Now, in addition to that meticulous self-care, we as physicians can offer various medications. So there are medications, for instance, that can stimulate the production of saliva. Uh, one of them is uh, pilocarpine, another one is sevimaline, uh, which can help in that regard. Uh, there are also medications that can help the joint pain and fatigue. The one that's most commonly used is hydroxychloroquine. And when patients have more systemic manifestations, such as arthritis, or if they have internal organ manifestations, we may use some of the same medications that are used in patients with systemic lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, uh, including methotrexate and leflutamide and mycophenolate and azathioprine, all to try to bring this disease under better control. There are two medications available that can help stimulate the flow of saliva and to a less extent the flow of tears and can be helpful to patients with Sjogren's syndrome. And these are called pilocarpine and sevimaline. Patients can benefit, but at the same time, unfortunately, these medications can have side effects. They can cause sweating, it can cause urinary frequency, it can cause some stomach upset. Fortunately, many patients, if they continue the medication, will notice that these side effects will diminish, but the benefits will persist and so they can tolerate it. But many patients actually choose not to take these medications and just rely on using artificial tears and frequent sips of water to handle the dryness of their eyes and mouth. Well, there are different types of products that are available for dry eyes. There are, many of them are available over the counter, which are various artificial tears, which have different consistencies, which patients can choose and, and find the one that uh, best meets their needs. But the eye doctor, the eye care professional, may also provide medicated drops. There are different ones now available. One is called cyclosporin. The other one is ilifidograss, which are medicated anti-inflammatory drops, which can help the ocular inflammation that ensues from the dryness. The eye care professional can also offer various other treatments that can help. One of them is to actually occlude the tear ducts that drain tears from the eyes. And by occluding those, tear ducts can leave the tears in the eye and help relieve the dry eyes. There are also other treatments that are available. Sometimes if patients have particularly severe dry eyes, they can create an artificial tear from your own blood called serum tears. That can be a very wonderful form of eye drop for patients who have more severe dry eye disease. And finally, there's something called a scleral lens prosthesis, which is kind of a very large contact lens that goes over not only the cornea but the whites of the eye has a saline-filled well that uh, patients put in in the morning and it can help relieve the dry eye since symptoms quite dramatically. So some of my patients really find this to be a miraculous treatment. One of the more troubling symptoms that women who have Sjogren's syndrome may report is dryness of the vagina. And this can lead to a significant impairment in their sexual satisfaction. This is something that can be helped uh, by a gynecologist with lubricating gels, sometimes with topical hormone tr uh, treatments, um, and other uh, products that can uh, help vaginal lubrication. So one of the reasons that Sjogren's syndrome is hard to diagnose is that it really requires the expertise of not only a rheumatologist, but also an ophthalmologist or an eye care professional and sometimes an oral medicine specialist to actually make the diagnosis. So the eye care professional will do a special test to see about the, how much dryness there is of the eye. Uh, the oral medicine specialist will examine looking for a deficiency of saliva and will often help in getting a lip biopsy. 
And not only for diagnosis, but for management, the ideal management of patients with Sjogren's really should involve these three professionals, the rheumatologist, the oral medicine specialist, and the eye care professional, because each of them knows how to handle their particular area best and can provide optimal care for the patient with Sjogren's syndrome. There are no curative treatments for Sjogren's syndrome, but we have a variety of potential agents that might work in Sjogren's syndrome. And so there's now a considerable number of clinical trials that are being conducted to test various new agents, uh, some of which are brand new, others which are being used to treat other rheumatic diseases and to see if they will help patients with Sjogren's syndrome. So we at Hopkins and elsewhere are actively recruiting patients for these clinical trials and hope that one or more of these will provide a long-lasting treatment uh, for Sjogren's patients.